I use a very simple definition of trust. By trust, I mean confidence. Confidence. The opposite of that, distrust, is suspicion. See, I don't trust someone if I'm suspicious about their motive or their, or their agenda or their integrity. I do trust when I feel confident about it. It's like Jack Welch said, I could give you a dictionary definition of trust, but you know it when you feel it. And what you feel is confidence. So it's also credibility, I assume. What's, what's the difference between trust and credibility? I believe trust and credibility are like two sides of the same coin. But that credibility is actually the foundation on which all trust is built. You always start with the credibility, believability. See, that's what credibility means, believability. You start there, but then with that base, you now need to behave in ways that will actually build trust with people. But your starting place is credibility. Our presidential candidates, our corporate executives, TV pitch men, they're always telling us, trust me, you know, trust me. Yeah. But how should they build their trust? What are the steps and steps to build that kind of trust? You need both character and confidence. That's the first part, your credibility. The second part is then behavior. And that's how you act with people, how you behave, the way in which you do it. And that's how you build trust, through your credibility and then through your behavior, the things that you do. Your newest book is The Speed of Trust, a uh, wonderful book. Um, shouldn't that really be, though, the speed in which trust can be destroyed? It takes you longer to build it up. You can destroy it overnight. It's like Warren Buffett said, it takes, five, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. And that's what can happen. You literally can destroy the trust that you have overnight with behaviors that do that. It takes you longer to build it up. But here's what I mean by the speed of trust. Warren Buffett, very trusted, right? Extremely credible, very trusted. He wrote about this in his annual report. He did a deal with uh, Walmart where he bought McLean Distribution, $23 billion enterprise. To do the McLean deal, he had one meeting of two hours. He shook hands. 29 days later, Walmart had their money. He did no due diligence because he knew everything would be exactly the way Walmart said it would be, and it was. Now, you couldn't do that kind of deal without trust. It would be foolish to try. Trust is not just a nice-to-have social virtue. It is that, but it's much more. It is a hard-edged economic driver. Why? Because trust always affects speed and cost, and you can measure speed and cost. Those are the economics of trust. The knee-jerk reaction I found among many corporate leaders is, um, whoa, whoa you, you can't tell them that, you know. Um, right. My goodness, the public will never understand. But, but my sense is that transparency is, in fact, a very important component of trust and that you really do need to, if, you, if you've broken faith, if you will, with your clients or your customers or what have you, you need to do something like that to restore the trust. The counterfeit behavior for righting the wrong is you try to disguise it and cover it up. But in today's world, you know what? It doesn't stay covered up very long. And rather than fight the transparency revolution taking place, lead it. Be part of it. Because it's, it's especially vital to building trust if the trust is low. When the trust is low, people don't trust what they cannot see. So let them see it. Open it up. Be transparent. What kinds of organizations call on you uh, to, to kind of rebuild their, their credibility, if you yeah, will? Yeah, yeah. I tend, the work that we do runs the gamut, but we tend to do a little bit more on two extremes. The one extreme is the company that has got trust problems, either in the marketplace and or in their own company. There's low trust everywhere, and they know it. They've done surveys on it, and it's really hurting them. So they're paying the tax, and, and the, the, the low trust tax, and they want help. They want to understand how you increase that. And we've learned how you can move the needle. We help companies do that. They can actually move the needle on trust and get better at it and improve it. The other extreme kind of is... We do a lot of work with companies that are already doing outstanding with trust. They're very trusted in the marketplace with their, all their different stakeholders, internally, externally. But so? these companies are so good, they want to st they're like Tiger Woods, right. always getting better, trying to stay ahead of the curve, and always renewing themselves, recreating themselves. And they want to make sure that they don't ever assume this or take it for granted. And so they're constantly investing, reinvesting, and trying to stay relevant, current, and to build that trust with all their stakeholders and to never assume it or take it for granted. Kind of those two camps tend to be the, one, the majority of the work we do. do. Do people always trust you? I've got to be credible, both because of my character, my integrity and my intent, but also my, my capabilities, my competencies, and my track record of results. And then I need to behave in the ways that build trust. And if I do, I generally will build trust. 
If I don't, I'll, I can lose it like anybody else. So I hope that I, I've done, I hope I have enough credibility that I start on first base.